Tonight I'm gonna to take you on a neurosurgery night shift during the COVID pandemic. Beautiful. You look you look like you're about to cut a body up or something. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, as you can see, I'm in Mile End, Queen Mary University of London campus, and this is where the trust are giving us uh, rooms to stay if we're living too far away from home to travel in because all the trains are messed up and it's really difficult to get into work. I've got this little single room here. Um, got a nice little single bed. It's the first time I've slept on a single bed in a really long time. There is this little ensuite bathroom in here. Beautiful thing of beauty. And pretty much amenities are what you would expect from a medical student campus. Not too terrible, relatively comfortable, but it is very, very loud. This is my second night shift that you're gonna be following me on. And I think I've had about four hours sleep. Just sorted myself out, got ready. It's about 6.30. I'm gonna go and try and find some food if I'm feeling up to it. I'm never usually that hungry when I wake up for night shifts though, so I'm gonna start making a move to quit from Queen Mary University of London towards the Royal London Hospital, and I have my trusty steed here, a micro scooter, which my wife bought for me. And it's actually really quite fun to use. So let's jump on the scooter and head to the Royal London Hospital. what I just found. So I've got my scrubs, time to get changed and get ready for the night shift. As usual we're heading toward 12E. 12F has been shut and has been kept for Covid patients and we're going to go to handover now at 8 o'clock and before we do that I'll just show you this. Glorious view. That view is always to die for at sunrise and sunset. So we're gonna to go to handover now and see what the day has brought us and what the night might bring us. Yo! Big boss! What's Sorry, up? Man. What's up? Good? So one of the first things that we do is take handover and find out what needs to be done from the day, if anything, and stuff to be aware about for the night. So the day reg has just handed over and gone home. And then one of the first and important things to do is order some dinner. Now, the hospital has been really good. They've been giving us free uh, breakfast and dinner and so on and so forth. But sometimes you do just want a treat on a night shift. and being in central london and east london means that the range of takeaway stuff that you can get is absolutely awesome and this burger is one of them on a night shift it's it's completely unpredictable uh, anything can happen at any time but one of the things that is completely predictable is that you'll have no phone calls while you order your food and wait for your food and then as soon as you sit down and open your burger and you're about to eat it, you'll get back-to-back -back phone calls. And by the time you get back to your food, it's usually cold. Um, that just happened and it's fine. You get used to it, right? The only other thing that is also completely predictable is that things might not happen. And again, we're not gonna say the Q word because that just invites disaster. So you might have a couple of hours where nothing really happens. There aren't really any referrals you'll really tentatively creep back to the on-call room and think, okay, I could get some sleep. You'll sit in bed, pull your covers over, turn off the light, and suddenly the phone will start ringing. It's guaranteed, 100%, every single time. You can almost set your clock by it. So we've just got a call from the intensive care unit to say that there is a drain in a patient that has stopped working. Now, because of the whole coronavirus pandemic, we don't go to the intensive care that has the COVID patients that often, unless it's absolutely necessary. In this case, we're gonna to have to go because only we can troubleshoot the drain. Um, so that means wearing full PPE, uh, which is uh, going to be a, a mask, 
hat, visor, apron, gown, gloves, and then we'll go. So the person who just called me to tell me about the problem, I could barely hear what they were saying because they had one of these masks on, so it sounded a bit like this, and it's quite difficult to hear on the phone. So we're gonna head down there and troubleshoot that and then see what the rest of the night brings us. Beautiful. You look, you look like you're about to cut a body up or something. <laughs> I'm a six eyes. Back, I'm gonna make myself an espresso. Um, my brother-in-law got me an awesome hand presso machine, which I completely forgot about until now. So I freshly ground some beans and this is gonna be my night coffee and it's gonna be so good. You've probably seen loads of really cool like uh, coffee videos or people doing a day in the life and they're doing like a really nice uh, coffee uh, pouring thing. So I'm going to try and do something similar on a night shift and I'm going to show you my hand presso. So we've just got back from ITU, did some troubleshooting and now it's time to make that coffee. So we've got the freshly ground coffee beans and coffee that I showed you and we've got a nice little espresso cup, this little bad boy right here, really nice. Then we've got the hand presso machine, okay? And this is the hand presso machine. So, very slick, very beautiful bit of engineering, very heavy, very nice. Uh, and it's black and gold, one of my favorite color combinations. So you take this little lid off and this is your little filter and then the hot water goes in here. So you put the boiling water in there, put the coffee in this, pop it in there like that, close the lid, and you have to pump it up. That's how you create the pressure. So what we'll do first is pump this up, and it's like a bicycle pump. So you just keep pumping it up. It's quite easy to begin with and then it gets really difficult. So, and then you lock it like that. So now this is ready. I'm gonna go fill this up with boiling water and then we'll make a coffee. So we've got our coffee grounds in here. We're gonna fit it in here like this. We're ready to make this coffee now. It's even got a crema on top of it. Yum, yum. It smells pretty good too. So it's about 2.30 in the morning now and I've had a couple of referrals from the emergency department. Um, I thought it would be worth talking about um, the kinds of things that we're seeing as a neurosurgical department uh, throughout this COVID pandemic and what we're getting referred overnight and during the day. At the beginning, there was a lot of um, people were scared about the coronavirus. Everyone was on lockdown and the majority of the referrals and the majority of the patients that were coming into the hospital were coronavirus patients. There was a kind of lull and a, and a period of time where uh, everything became a bit more subdued, that everyone was on high alert for COVID-19. And the amount of trauma that was coming in, uh, the number of brain tumours that were being referred and so on and so forth dropped quite significantly. But over the past week, week and a half, we've seen the volume of trauma that's coming into the hospital significantly rise. Now, uh, everyone's supposed to, be, supposed to be socially distancing from each other and only key workers are supposed to be going on essential travel. But the number of road traffic accidents that are happening, uh, high speed collisions, whether that's uh, motorbike versus car, car versus car, cars flipping, we're getting cyclists hit by cars, 
that so all the regular patterns that we're seeing are starting to come back but they're starting to come back in quite a high volume and that's despite the lockdown which is quite odd and quite weird we're also seeing a lot of mental health issues that are coming to the forefront now which is quite sad it looks like a lot of people that have been already quite socially isolated before the lockdown because of their mental health problems are becoming even more isolated and uh, that's manifesting as suicide attempts and with quite serious uh, spinal fractures, neck fractures and really really serious head injuries that are happening. We're seeing quite a lot of that as well. So there are also some really really odd stories and I can't really talk about them because the, the stories and the traumas that are happening are so unique that you could probably identify the people from uh, the stories. But um, it, it's all very, very odd, to be honest. We're starting to see the number of brain tumours that are presenting to the emergency department uh, steadily increasing again as uh, the, the kind of anxiety about coronavirus is starting to reduce over time. So people are presenting to the accident and emergency again, but they're significantly more unwell than they perhaps might have been previously. I, I'm assuming that the cardiologists are probably finding the same with people who are staying home with really serious uh, chest pain and heart problems who are just not seeking medical attention. So I think we're going to see a really big spike and increase in the number of hospital admissions uh, for non-COVID stuff again. I think uh, one of the things that you get asked a lot about is how to prepare for night shifts. And everybody is different. Some people will have a bit of sleep before their first shift uh, to try and prep themselves for it. Because myself and my colleagues are quite used to doing 24 hour shifts. We're used to working through a normal day and then just being on call through to the next day. But then if you're then having to do another shift, that kind of is a bit difficult. Um, I don't sleep before my first night shift. I just go through, try and get some sleep on the shift if it's possible. And then the next day, I think the key is to try and, you know, there was a, there was a nice paper in the BMJ, I think, uh, a little while back that gave some really good tips on, you know, how to optimize yourself for the next day and that's drink, drinking loads of water um, which is easier said than done. Some people wear sunglasses on the way home so that their circadian rhythm is not going straight back into a daytime routine. They keep everything as dark as possible as soon as they get home, um, eye mask, blinds shut and just get straight into bed and sleep. I find it really difficult on night shifts to sleep Usually if the sun's out, it's quite difficult. If I'm at home, um, then it is possible to get some sleep. The other thing is eating well as well. I mean, it's when you're doing a night shift, you get this horrible hunger in the middle of the night. And it's not a hunger for nice food. It's a hunger for sugar and salt and basically all kinds of crap. And the more of that stuff that you eat, the worse you're going to feel and the harder it is for you to sleep. So I think the take home messages are to try and eat well, try and get some sleep during the day, block everything out, um, no light, no sunlight in the room, make it as dark as possible and stay really, really well hydrated. Some of the main duties that you have as a registrar on nights are to take referrals from out of hospital and it can be exactly the same volume of referrals as during the day. Sometimes it's a little bit less uh, intense but it can also be very intense. You need to take patients to theatre that need to go to theatre straight away you also need to tee up the more complex patients for operations the next day sometimes. So things that aren't entirely appropriate to do overnight and will require really long surgical times uh, and require lots of other people to be around if necessary. So those are two of the main roles. Um, just making sure that the ward patients are ticking over, 
we've got a lot of patients on intensive care at the moment with lots of complex needs and who have raised intracranial pressure that the intensive care team are managing at the moment but should they lose control of the intracranial pressure through medical means then that's when we get called usually with a new scan and we need to decide whether there's any other kind of surgical intervention that can be done to help reduce that intracranial pressure and that's bearing in mind that these patients may already have had uh, a some kind of surgical intervention on admission already so you then need to look at any other potential targets that could be used to try and reduce that intracranial pressure. So that, that's the main workload overnight. Referrals from the emergency department here and all around North London actually. Um, intensive care patients that are becoming more and more unwell and ward patients that can sometimes become more unwell as well. So truce of form it's the end of the night shift now um, I've handed over to my colleague Shamila who's taken over for the day and it looks like they've got an operation to do for a fractured spine. It's a complex trauma where there's a lot of different parts of the body affected so there's going to be three different teams involved in fixing the patient. So last night overnight, crawled into bed, got called, had to look at some scans, looked at a referral, crawled back into bed got called five minutes later and, and so on and so forth. It's quite uncommon for any hospital doctor to have a night where they don't get called at all, although rarely, rarely it can happen. But then you're so anxious that your phone isn't working or if you carry a bleep that the bleep has stopped working or something that you kind of end up staying awake and you're really agitated subconsciously all night anyway. So um, it's about... 9.30 now, I'm going to get back on the scooter, head back to the university accommodation where I'm staying and then try and get some sleep and I'm going to head back in tonight for the last of my three nights um, and then let's see if anything happens this evening that I can talk to you guys about. So I'm going to go to sleep now and I'll see you this evening. So that's the end of the night shift and um, I thought I'd come and sit here by the river which I'll show you now because um, this is one of the worst things about doing shift work as opposed to the 24 hour on calls that we were doing before our emergency rotor and that's that when you get home and the weather is absolutely beautiful it's almost impossible to sleep <laughs> um, especially when you've got such beautiful surroundings but I'm in again tonight for the third night shift out of three because we're doing them in blocks of four and blocks of three um, because of our emergency rotor because of the whole coronavirus pandemic so I'm just gonna sit here and relax for a bit and then head up to the room and try and close my eyes and get some sleep while the sun is out in full force um, just the last thing I wanted to really talk about from these uh, emergency rotor changes are the operations that we would usually do on our own uh, as registrars on a night shift. Um, our consultants are having to come in because we're wearing full PPE, uh, they're consultant led operations now. Um, consultants would come in before for operations, um, especially if we, if it was a very complex case or we were really worried that there would be complications on the table. But now bosses are coming in for everything and um, yeah, it, it can make things quicker. That's one of the main changes that's happened from an operating basis, as well as the fact that we wear full PPE for absolutely every operation because using the drill, um, high speed drill, generates particles so it's classed as an aerosol producing or aerosol generating procedure even though we're mainly worried about things coming from the respiratory tract but yeah it's it all cranial and spine drilling cases are classed as aerosol generating so anyway i hope you enjoyed that that was uh, a single night shift as a neurosurgery reg during the coronavirus pandemic nice noisy train and uh, definitely like the video and subscribe. See you next time.